Welcome to this next video in a series of videos from Boat Companion. This week we'll be talking about moorings and the various places that you can keep your boat around the coast of the UK. Now the important thing to note with choosing a berth is the location is mostly driven by price. The prices for different berths vary hugely according to whether it's a marina, a swinging berth or a mud berth. Uh, so we'll be talking about all the various options and how you go about choosing a berth based on cost and convenience of location. Now it's important to note that the type of marina berth that you can take or the type of berth out in a river is partly driven by the type of boat that you have. If you have a boat that can take the uh, seabed then you can take a drying mooring but if you have a boat with a deep keel then you have to stay in a mooring which is permanently uh, permanently has water underneath the boat. Now the first type of uh, berth that you can see in this picture is the traditional marina berth. Very convenient, prices are, are the highest out of any kind of berth ranging from say £5,000 for a 26 foot boat on the south coast up to maybe or down to maybe £1,500 for a, a cheaper marina berth in a more remote area, probably sort of Scotland, that kind of area. Uh, another way of mooring your boat is, is quite often in a marina where you moor your boat side onto a pontoon. Uh, these are normally uh, a bit cheaper than a, a normal traditional marina berth. Um, the reason for this is that the, uh, it's cheaper to install these kinds of berths because they don't have all of the individual fingers coming off. And if it's cheaper for the marina to install the berth, it's, uh, it's normally cheaper for you to, uh, uh, to take one of those berths. Um, now, an important thing to note with these berths is they're often more exposed. Uh, they're, they're often in places where it's harder to get the uh, the fingers in, so they're probably up a river. Um, and uh, you do have to be careful with how exposed those berths are. With these kinds of berths, if you do get a high wind that's blowing the boat onto the pontoon, probably in the winter periods, it can cause damage to your boat. So you do need to weigh up um, the convenience of being adjacent to one of these kind of pontoons with uh, the potential damage that could occur in the um, in in high winds. Now, a, a, a cheap kind of berth is a swinging mooring berth. Now, on this particular swinging mooring berth, it's deep at all states of tide, so you can put any kind of boat on it. Now, the reason I've chosen a picture with rough weather is to show that you know these berths are often very exposed. They can be just sitting out in uh, in open open water sometimes. But because the boat has nothing to crash into and all it's doing is uh, facing into the waves as it swings around the pontoon, then uh, it, it, it's a good way to keep your boat very safe uh, and it can take uh, very, very high, uh, very uh, high waves and, and big winds without any damage. The inconvenience is that you have to take uh, a mode of transport out to the boat, possibly a tender. Now another kind of marina berth, you don't see many of these, this particular image is of Yarmouth Marina. These are called pile berths where you have two piles, you moor your boat between the piles and uh, you tie off to a ring that runs up and down the pile as the tide comes in and out. Um, very good, keep your boat away from any other kind of boats, uh, nothing for the boat to bash up against, um, a very safe place to keep your boat. Again you have to take a, uh, a mode of transport out, possibly a taxi in Yarmouth case or a uh, or a tender. Uh, personally, I find them quite difficult to get onto and off of in certain uh, wind conditions, but uh, once you get used to it, it's not too bad at all. Now, the moorings we're showing here are Mediterranean-type moorings. I find them incredibly difficult, especially if there's any wind blowing across the bow. You have to reverse into the mooring up against a, um, a solid um, harbour wall, the reason the wall can be solid is because in places like Mediterranean, where you see the Mediterranean marinas, where you see these, there's very little tide, so you don't have to have a floating pontoon um, to go uh, up and down with the tides. You do have to lay an anchor out in front of the boat, often a kedge anchor, um, to keep the front of the boat from moving backwards and forwards. Um, personally, I don't like them at all, but if you do it enough, um, you will get used to them, and you will find them everywhere in the, Madri uh, the Adriatic and Mediterranean, Greece, all those kinds of areas. Another berth here is a side-on drying pontoon berth. Um, now, uh, this is a traditional marina, but in a marina that dries out. Um, a good example of this would be Ride Marina on the Isle of Wight. The berths are a lot cheaper uh, because it's a drying marina, and um, you know, you're limited to when you can take your boat in and out. But it is a cheaper option. Obviously, you need to have a boat that can take the seabed, uh, whether it's a retractable keel or a bilge keel of uh, some kind. The next type of berth here is a side-on um, drying berth, often used for very large boats. Um, quite often liverboard boats will have uh, this kind of 
mooring system. Um, you do have to be very careful how you moor the boat up. Watch it for the first few times that it takes um, to the ground to ensure it's sitting in a nice comfortable location in the mud. Um, there was one time that I moored up like this and I came back to the boat when the tide had gone out and it was at about a 45 degree angle. Not good because we were going to sleep on the boat so we had to wait for the tide to come back in to uh, straighten the boat up. Relatively cheap, um, good for very very large boats um, for, for liverboard boats. You find these uh, all over the UK. Now the cheapest kind of mooring that you can possibly get is a swinging drying mooring. So you are attached to a buoy, uh, when the tide comes in the boat can freely swing around that mooring and uh, when the tide goes out the boat takes to the, uh, to the seabed. Um, not a problem, um, the advantage is that the hull does get a period of time to dry out each time that the tide goes out. You obviously have to have a boat that you know can take the seabed. In this particular image it's a bilge keel um, sailing boat and uh, these are very cheap, often owned by councils. You might pay a few hundred pounds, sometimes if it's a sailing club berth it might be as cheap as the, the maintenance cost of that mooring. Uh, this kind of system, very interesting, something called jet float. Um, you actually power your boat onto a pad, uh, a floating pad, and this pad keeps the boat out of the water. It's great because you don't need to uh, take the boat out of the water in the off-season to allow the hull to dry out because it's obviously stored out of the water. You also don't need to worry about anti-fouling uh, because the boat is <clears throat> kept clear of the water so you don't get any uh, grime build-up or barnacle build-up on the bottom of the boat. can be a little tricky to get on and off of these things. Um, you also pay the price of having a marina berth and you also have to pay for the, uh, the pontoon that you're going to sit on as well which can be a couple of thousand pounds. Now, you know, the cheapest possible way of having a boat and owning it is to put it on a trailer and take it home with you. You've obviously got to have a space at home for storage of that boat and you've got to have access to a slipway to launch it. Um, launching from slipways can be difficult. Um, you know, it's quite entertaining just sitting there watching people launch sometimes, how they do it wrong, how the boat slips off the side. I had to include this image. Um, clearly these people have gone about things in the wrong manner. Um, and it's just to show that uh, mooring a boat uh, or, or launching a boat from a trailer can be difficult. So that's why people often decide to keep their boats in a uh, marina location. Now, something which is developing quite substantially in the UK now is something called dry stack storage. Now, dry stack storage is where the boat is lifted out in the water by a very large marine forklift truck, and then the truck places the boat into a racking system. It works for boats up to about 30 foot in the UK. In sort of Florida, they're doing it for boats up to 40 uh, foot. Um, it's a relatively cheap thing to, to weigh to store your boat, probably about £1,000 a year, um, if you've got, say, a 26, 27 foot boat. Um, and uh, it keeps the boat out of the water, stops any growth on the bottom of the boat, uh, maintains the value of the boat, stops any water ingress into it. Very good way of storing a boat. So uh, that's it for uh, mooring options uh, for this week. Uh, I hope it's been of some use, and I hope that you'll join us next week for Shared Ownership Schemes.